Good morning. Welcome to Bethany United Methodist Church, Somerville, South Carolina. <clears throat> a welcome to all of our members and a special welcome to you who might be worshiping online with us, who might not be a part of our fellowship. You're welcome. We love you. God loves you. Thank you for being here and being a part of this. You will notice that we are worshiping from our Word and Table Worship Center this morning. We're trying to bring worship from different places in our church or different worship venues in our church. Uh, we had our traditional uh, worship upstairs in our sanctuary last week. We're doing Word and Table uh, today. If we're not with you uh, in person on Monday, Thursday, if we're not together, we'll be doing that from Spell. Our Palm Sunday service and Easter service, if we need to do it online, uh, will be, of course, again, back in our sanctuary. So we want to say that Bethany is one, and we want everyone to experience our pastors and our different worships, and it's a great way for us to do that during this time. So thank you for being with us. We are in God's house. Let us now worship God. Oh 
Our psalm today is taken from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills from where my help comes. My help comes from the Lord, who had made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber or sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the new moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep you going out and you're going in from this time on and forevermore. This time we want you to go to the Lord in prayer, lifting up our prayers to him. I ask that you bow your heads with me. Our Father God, we acknowledge your son, Lord Jesus. And at this time, we cannot deny the pain nor the difficulty in these earthly trials that we are going through. For some, the reality of this is almost unbearable. But being sovereign and being the one who was full, cap fully capable to handle any of our needs, it is not beyond your strength to take this burden and in return to give us perspective that you are there and that you care. Quiet our spirits. Give us a sense of relief as we face the inevitable fact that life is difficult at this time and that there may be those in these moments that feel like it's not fair and may not feel like they can deal with this. Lord, I pray that you would erase any hint of hopelessness Enable us to see beyond the present, to focus on the invisible, and to recognize that you are always there. Remind us, too, you're always higher and far more profound than our ways. Lord, we also pray for strength and wisdom for our leaders. Lord, protection and strength for the caregivers that are going above and beyond to take care of the many that are sick. Lord, for the first responders, I pray that you would watch over them and their families. Lord, I thank you for the joy of this day that we can fellowship and worship you in different ways. And we thank you for the pleasure of relationship with you and your good and caring, loving friends that we have in the church. Father, thank you for the truth of your word that lives and abides with us forever. And we come to you with all these things, these prayers and praises, remembering the prayer that you gave not only your disciples, but also us, your church. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time now, we call you to our time of offering. We invite our members and our friends to share their offerings with Bethany United Methodist Church. We as people of God had need in our hearts to give offerings. And let me thank you, those of you who are sending your offerings in, those of you who are online, uh, those of you on push pay uh, for your faithfulness the last couple of weeks. Thank you. Uh, let me share that uh, quickly the ways that you can give your offering. Uh, you can use push pay, you can go online, you can mail it in 118 West 3rd South Street, Somerville, South Carolina. Don't want you out unless you need to be out. If you are out, you can certainly bring it by the church office. We're staying open as long as we can. So thank you this day in advance for the offerings that you're going to give next week and weeks to come. In saying that, I want to say if you're unable to give, we understand. If these times are difficult for you, if you can't 
get to a place where you can give. If you're unable to give, don't feel bad about that. We understand. There will be a, a something on the uh, screen during this time of worship uh, so that you can see ways to give. And during this time of worship, meditate upon God in your hearts. Let us now receive our morning offering. the breath. 
gracious and loving God blessed this offering. The ones we have received and what we shall receive. During these difficult times, may our generosity go to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ through this community, this world, and bring peace. In Jesus' name, amen. A reading from Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 through 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So we've been consumed by many things these past two weeks. I looked up the word consume. It means, in Latin, consumere. It means con all together, and sumer, take up. Con all together, sumer, take up. We've been all together consumed by all of this stress. And we've taken up our burdens from that stress. So the word consume here is appropriate for this time and this place. We find ourselves consumed by fear, isolation, news, 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 24-hour news cycle, worry, job loss, waiting on a check, wondering where you'll get your next meal. Frustrations as parents were frustrated, as cooped up people were frustrated. We're frustrated with the social distancing. The governors are frustrated. The healthcare workers are frustrated, and we watch the news cycle, all feeling frustration. What are we to do with this frustration? I remember a time when I was very, very frustrated. I was diagnosed with a brain tumor in 2010 at the age of 30, and Enoch was three, and Evie was one. And the first surgery came off without a hitch. I had no deficits. But in 2013, it recurred, and they got it all, praise God, but it left me without the use of my right arm or my right hand and the ability, not the ability to speak. And that's very hard for a teacher or a preacher. I trained to be a teacher, had teacher-perfect handwriting, and now I was a preacher. You have to communicate if you're a preacher. And so that was a very frustrating time. The speech therapist made me read picture books with Evie, telling her the story that I made up in my head. I got very frustrated with him one time. And he said, Narcy, your brain will rewire itself. Your brain will rewire itself. I work with stroke victims and brain damage victims all the time. Your brain will rewire itself. We are not given much hope that my ability to speak would come back. The first time we saw the doctor, I had been singing along to Christian music on the radio. The first time we saw the doctor, Mike asked if it would help my speech. And they said, no, no. Well, I'm as stubborn as they come, and Mike is also. Um, and so that's just what we needed to hear. But without God's faithfulness, new every morning, we cannot have gone through that time. He gave me songs. He gave me students. He gave me movies to listen to, to watch, to Tell me that I still had a voice. His mercies were new every morning. Even though I was so frustrated by not being able to speak. It was called apraxia and aphasia. Not knowing how to speak even the order of the sentences in your head. That was so frustrating. Beyond frustrating. Corey Ten Boom's family were Dutch watchmakers and helped many Jews escape during the Holocaust from the Nazis. 
during World War II, hiding them in their homes. The Ten Boons got caught, arrested, and sent to Ravenbrook concentration camp. She writes in her famous book, The Hiding Place, never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. So how do we get there? Having walked with Jesus right beside us in the dark days, and how do we get to the tin boom? Quote, never trust an unknown future to a known God. What do we do with this fear and isolation and worry and frustration getting the best of us? Well, I'll tell you what helped me through my dark time and what's helping me now through my dark times. Prayer, centering prayer, to cut through the noise and the chaos. You can create a prayer closet. If you're a parent of little kids or you're a parent of a teenager, you have to snatch your times, your snippets of times to pray and center yourselves. Walk around with your kids. Walk around if you're an adult because God's beauty is astounding. His creation is beautiful. The lilies of the field, the birds of the air, who am I to be provided for? He knows our names. And Thanksgiving, number two, Thanksgiving. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number three, showing and sharing your God's love and joy. So, there are Bible verse pictures, because people have put up signs in their front yards with Bible verses on them to encourage people, to encourage your neighbors. Rainbows. Our neighbor is making rainbows to, for the little kids to see, to find, to count. Making crosses on windows or on a fence. Actually checking on our neighbors and filling up the blessing box as you've done so well. People are gonna be watching you because they know you're a Christian you have the bumper stickers, you have the Jesus fish. They know you're a Christian. So they're gonna be watching you, seeing how you react to every situation. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Maybe we've lost our tempers. Or this pause gives us time to dwell on the things we never could do right. And maybe just dwell on the past. But God has forgiven us for all those things. Romans 8, 38, 39. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else of all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. God will be faithful yesterday, today, and tomorrow. As I close, hear the last verse of Great is Thy Faithfulness. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth, thine own dear present to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and a bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. In the days and the weeks ahead, please help us remember that if when we are worried or frustrated, you are with us. We can come to you in prayer and thanksgiving and share your love with the world. May it be so in each and every one of us until we meet again. Amen. Join with me as we affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died, and was buried. 
He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Thank you for our warden table uh, band and uh, Mike for providing the music. Uh, thank you for Mark and Narcy participating in Narcy's wonderful sermon. Uh, it's been a great day to be with you, but it's not over. In the tradition here now, we have a prayer, we have a song, and then a benediction. So don't go anywhere, uh, but I'm just thanking you for being part of this. I, I want to pray that you keep safe, that you wash your hands, you pray for one another, and you continue to love your neighbors during this day. You might find that one of the things that have been special to me in some of my uh, posts is music. Now, I'm not a singer, but music has wonderful lyrics that bless our souls. So now, for my time of prayer, as we get ready for the next song, I want to share with you the words of that beautiful music that Michael brought us last week. Let us pray. Oh Lord, why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for the heavenly home? When Jesus is my portion and my constant friend is he, you know his eye is on the sparrow and I know he cares for you and me. His eye is on the sparrow and I know he cares for you and me. Oh, bring your love, your care, your comfort, and your grace upon us, O oh Lord, right now. In Jesus' name, amen.
God grant you love, his mighty, enduring love. And may God grant you grace, the unfailing grace of his. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.